Thank you. It's very good to be here. And uh, thank you for taking the opportunity to hear something about the journey of Adjacents. So I'm not a farmer, but I did grow up on a sheep and cattle farm in northeast Victoria. And we were surrounded by dairy farms and a lot of, spent a lot of time on them. And I went off to become an engineer and spent the next 30 years developing new products for companies around the world. Most of them new technology products. So taking something out of a research laboratory or an idea and turning that into a working product to meet a, a global market need. And Adjacence is developing a, a world first product, something that we believe will transform the way you manage livestock on farms around the world. So farmers today are facing the same problems they have for the last 30 years, that is rising costs, um, labour is expensive and often hard to get, uh, commodity prices often squeeze margins. And farmers are increasingly running their farm as a business rather than as a lifestyle choice. Corporate farmers are chasing a higher return on investment and a need to increase in scale in order to improve profitability. And consumers have rising expectations that food will be produced in an ethical and a sustainable way. It's no secret that um, Implementing cell grazing techniques or strip grazing techniques enables farmers to increase stocking rate, improve productivity, improve soil health and animal health. And Adjacence is offering an opportunity to automate the process of cell grazing on small and large farms. This will enable them to increase meat and milk production for dairy farmers and beef farmers but also improve sustainability and animal health while decreasing labour and other input costs. So our system is uh, developed from the CSIRO, um, but we've put that into an Internet of Things device so that a farmer uses their smartphone or tablet or computer to create a fence or a moving grazing program. That's communicated through a base station on the farm to uh, collar on each animal, uh, much like this one here, um, this is a model, but this is a dairy oestrus detection collar with a virtual fence module attached to that. So that enables the um, farmer to fence and move their livestock. And the collar contains a, an algorithm, which, let me put that down here where it's safe, which essentially trains the animal to move or stay within a boundary. And the collar contains a GPS chip so it knows exactly where the animal is. So here's a demonstration um, at CSIRO in Armadale showing a group of cows, um, in this case Hereford steers, wandering around grazing within the virtual boundary. So you'll see that they move up quite close to the boundary that, but back off. And we're not suggesting that this is the scale that it should be used on, but it is a good demonstration that fits into the one screen. So the core IP here for us is this animal training program and it uses a combination of both a sound and an electric stimulus to basically mimic a physical electric fence. So as the animal approaches the boundary they first hear a sound and then they have the option to stop or turn away or turn back. But if they don't take that option they keep going just like an electric fence if they push into it they'll get a shock. The difference is that Having done that, if the animal keeps going, we can actually give them another sound. Or if they go for a run, we'll actually just let them run through. And so it's not a containment system, but it is a grazing control system. And we've demonstrated at CSIRO that you can contain animals to 98% of the time spending on the right side of that boundary. It also means that as a shepherd, we know where the animal is and where it's gone, what it's doing and we can then decide at a later stage to shepherd that animal back when it's calmed down or relaxed. Okay, for dairy farmers, the Dairy Australia carried out a study last year where they estimated that uh, a dairy farmer could increase their milk production by one litre more per cow per day based on a well-performing dairy farm in Gippsland. So they can do that by improved pasture utilisation through improved animal health 
as a result of that and also as a result of monitoring and providing decision data support to the farmer. The extra milk per litre per day uh, translates to about $126 at the previous prices, which hopefully are more long term. And uh, that provides a, a payback to the farmer within one year. At the same time, they can also realise other re cost reductions per cow per year in terms of uh, reduced labour and reduced use of fertiliser, uh, reduced fence insulation maintenance and also other health support costs. For a beef farmer, farmers have demonstrated that they can increase stocking rate up to 50 or 100 per cent through implementing controlled cell grazing programs. So we have farmers who desperately would like to get hold of this system so that they can then increase their stocking rate and then improve profitability because most of the increase in productivity goes straight to profit. So in this case you can do that but you can also at the same time avoid land damage by controlling where the animals graze and for rangeland farmers you can muster your stock and recover 100% of the animals um, at the same time reducing injuries and improving animal health through monitoring. At the same time a rangeland farmer could also reduce fencing costs or eliminate them, uh, reduce the, or eliminate the use of aircraft and ground crew and reduce labour and insurance costs and also improve the health of their animals. Another big area of interest um, and the source of our current funding at the moment comes from an environmental need for sustainability. So overgrazing costs our country a lot. It's a problem both in New Zealand and the US and other countries. But also cattle regularly pollute rivers and waterways. Um, they cause a lot of damage. It also uh, reduces the amount of pure water availability to communities. When we put up fences to keep uh, animals out of those areas, we also find that the fences kill wildlife and they interfere with wildlife habitat and that's an important ingredient for keeping water clean. At the same time the fences are regularly uh, eliminated by floods or destroyed by fire, particularly in Australia. So as a result governments are spending a lot of money annually and this is an opportunity to be able to fence animals out of those areas and control where they graze. So another key in interesting thing is that by implementing cell grazing you can actually increase this carbon soil content and improve nutrition in the soil which reduces greenhouse gases and farmers can claim, claim a credit for eligible schemes, uh, a carbon credit for their effort to do that. At the same time, as you mentioned, it can keep water resources cleaner, um, enable sustainable land use. So one of the opportunities here is to be able to use satellite imaging uh, on drone technology to actually map pasture base and pasture biomass and then use this system to be able to move the animals on and off that particularly in rangeland farms, automate, automate that system and enable uh, improved productivity but at the same time reduce risk of overgrazing and therefore improving sustainability of land use. The other opportunity for us is the uh, opportunity for big data. So these animals now wearing our collar, we can actually detect health issues, we can detect when they're eating, when they're ruminating, when they're sleeping and what they're doing and we can map that as to where they're doing it. So we can get a lot of data about animals on individual farms, variation across individual paddocks and different soil types and landforms, and we believe that will be a strong um, value to producers right through the food value, uh, production value chain. At the moment we're getting strong industry support and interest, so recently uh, Dairy Australia was awarded uh, $2.6 million from the Rural R&D for Profit Fund. This is part of Barnaby Joyce's election uh, campaign. Um, they're running a $5.4 million research program along with um, Meat and Livestock Australia, Australian Wool Innovation and Australian Pork to use our system to apply that onto farms and work out the best way to apply and use this virtual shepherding technology on Australian farms. At the same time, they're working with Tasmanian Institute for Agriculture, University of Sydney, University of Melbourne, CSIRO, and University of New England. And we're also working with catchment management authorities in Victoria, uh, local land services in New South Wales, and equivalent organisation in Queensland, 
WA, New Zealand and the US. So our market is a world market, although Australia is an important part of that and that's where we are. The markets actually we're focused on are much bigger. We've recently uh, done a deal with an international investor um, who's a well-known and uh, well-respected premium brand to farmers all around the world. And we hope to be able to use that as they and use their distribution system to be able to start distributing in about uh, one to two years. During that time though, we were working with them to develop our first product, which will be available in about the same time next year, in about 12 months. We're also capital raising. So we last year received some grant funding and seed funding. Now we are raising $2 million maximum, based on a $2.4 million pre-money valuation. We've received $500,000 so far and then we're continuing on. So if you are interested in that, do see me afterwards and be happy to talk to you about it. We have put together a very good team and uh, well supported. I talked about myself uh, or Iton did earlier. Um, but the other key directors we have are Andrew Maxwell. Andrew is, uh, has 30 years experience as a serial entrepreneur and has built many businesses and exited successfully. And he's also a private equity wealth manager for some of Australia's richest families. Uh, Paul Weller is a dairy farmer. Some people may recognise him as former president of the Victorian Farmers Federation. He's also uh, been a director of Murray Goulburn and other agribusiness companies and comes with a wealth of experience. He was also a deputy speaker in the Victorian Parliament up until 2014 when he retired from politics. Our fourth director is uh, being appointed from our lead investor and partner from overseas. So in short, uh, we are developing the world's first virtual shepherd. We see this as a crucial and important tool that farmers will be able to use and farmers have described this as the biggest step forward in livestock management since the invention of the electric fence. We hope that it will become something that improves the profitability and uh, productivity and sustainability of agriculture here in Australia but also in other parts of the world and we look forward to it helping to help our farmers help feed the world and the growing population there but also help supply um, Asia's growing middle class into the future. Thank you.